Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video I want to basically look at some Swift UI data flow. So in this like mini series you could call it, the first thing we're going to look at is state. So I want to look at state, discuss what it is and give you some practical, you know, use cases for when it would be useful to use state. So what is state? So state allows us to modify values within a struct. So why is that even important? So if you work with Swift UI, you might realize that, you know, views are actually technically structs. So the reason why this is important is because structs are value types, meaning that whenever they get modified, you get a new recreation. It's not a reference type where you can reference the same object. State allows us, it allows us to maintain the state of our properties. So we can read and write to the same objects within our Swift UI views. So what does it, how does it actually work? So essentially with Swift UI, it basically has a shared storage that allows us to basically read and write values to allows us to basically redraw the view so we can now reflect the new state of our property. It's a graphic to show you what state looks like. So let's look at this piece of code that we have here. So you basically have a property um, which basically is a boolean and it's called is on to basically simulate a switch. So what we can actually do is we can actually change the value for this property and read and write it and it will be stored in Swift UI storage. So we have a property here is on and if we were to set the value to false, we could basically have an image that represents it a light switch being turned off. But what would happen if we basically had the same object and we want to basically represent that and actually change the value is on to true. So if we were to change the value of is on to true, we can actually change the way our view looks and actually show a different icon. So in this case, show the light bulb turned on. All right, cool. So hopefully that broke that down a bit. But what we actually need to do to actually see this in action is actually use an actual, you know, practical example. What we're going to basically do now is we're actually going to see how we can actually use state to actually manage animations as an example in our Swift UI views. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to basically in our project, as you can see here, I just called it state. We're going to basically create a property called is loading, which is going to be our state variable for reading and writing to. Um, whether this view is loading or not. So we've got to simulate that. So what I'm just going to do, we'll type out the syntax for the state property wrapper, and then we'll break it down. So what you need to do when you're using this is you basically need to specify and make sure you use this property wrapper. And it's also generally good practice as well to actually mark your variables as private. So the reason why you probably want to do that is because you don't really want to expose this state outside of this struct. You want it to be self-contained within this view. Now, you don't need to also declare the type here. I've just done it for more visibility. But what we basically said here is we have a property called is loading and the default value for this property is going to be false. So what we're able to do now, because we've marked this property as a state variable, we're actually able to maintain the value for this when we read and write to it. And next thing we're going to do now is we're actually going to actually write out a computed property for our animation, which is what we're going to be using in the next bit. So I'm just going to type it out and then break it down. Our computed property here, which we also marked as private, we basically just have our animation that we've created, um, as you can see here. But if you notice something in our repeat count, we are using our property here is loading to basically declare whether we want the repeat count to be max, which essentially just means infinity or zero. So why do we do this? So essentially what we're doing here is we basically say that whenever the property is loading changes, we want to basically change the value that we basically pass into our function repeat count. So whenever the true view is redrawn, this modifier will basically have a new value. And what could that new value possibly be? Well, essentially, if it's true, it will be max. And if it's false, it will be zero. So what we're basically using here is something called a ternary operator. So depending on the expression here, we're going to use either the true or false value that basically gets evaluated. So when you're working with Swift UI um, and state properties, if you need to change something like the color or the text or the height or whatever it is, 
nine, well, not nine, but 10 times out of 10 always, you don't really want to use an if statement. You want to use a ternary operator. The value for the modifier is changed, but the view still remains the same. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to use our spinner animation on an image. And we're going to also have a button that basically allows us to stop and start this animation. So I'm going to type this out now. So let's just break this down. So as you can see on our image, we're just using an SF symbol, which basically is like a sync kind of icon or loading icon. Apply some modifiers, but if you actually look at the rotation effects that we're basically giving onto it, so if you actually want this to rotate around, um, like a loading spinner. We're doing the same thing again where we use a ternary operator. So again, we're basically saying that if it is loading, then we want the value in our modifier to basically be 360 degrees or else we want it to be zero. So we're not using an if statement again, we're using the ternary operator. And what we're basically saying here is we want the animation to basically trigger based on the is loading state variable. So Whenever this is loading changes, the animation is what will basically trigger. And then finally, what we're basically saying here is we're changing the value for the title again, using a ternary operator. So we're not using any if statements again. And within the if statement, we're basically using the toggle property on is loading to basically change the value within our state variable. So what does this toggle do? So essentially what this toggle is doing is if this value is false, then it will actually write to its loading and change it to true. And if it's true, it will change it to false. So think of it like a switch where you just toggle either something on or off. So this is what's actually going to cause our view to basically redraw. All right, cool. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to see this in action and we'll actually hit the preview and I'm going to hit start. And as you can see, our animation is basically playing. Now that's a bit crazy. So what I'm going to do is we'll slow it down a bit. All right, cool. And then as you can see, we basically now get like our loading animation, nice and easy. All right, cool. And now if I hit stop, you'll see that animation stops. And if I hit start again, it starts. So because we're toggling the is loading property, basically what's happening is when we change the value, all our modifiers or parameters that basically use this is loading are basically being redrawn with the new values. So as you can see here, but let's just stop this again now. So now let's go back to our presentation and discuss where you'd actually want to use this. So you probably want to use state if you have to work with like simple struct types. So if you have to work with like strings, integers, or booleans. So let's say for example, if you have like a switch and you just want to basically track whether it's being turned on or off, then that'll be a good use case for a state variable. Also as well, you also want to use state if you want to have a value that only needs to be contained within that view. So if you have a value that doesn't need to be shared between multiple views or passed between multiple views as well, it can just be self-contained. You probably want to use state. Like in our loading example, we were basically using the is loading property to basically just control the animation for the view. That's not really something that needs to be exposed outside. It's just something that's self-contained within that view. Just as a reminder, you also want to make sure that with state that you mark them as private. And the reason being is because you don't really want the state of the view to be exposed or changed outside of its scope. All right, cool. So this was a quick video on state and how you can use it with practical examples. If you enjoyed this video or if you have any other tips and tricks that you want to give to people, leave it down in the comment section below. Also as well, if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell at the bottom below. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.